<laughs> uh, so I thought I'd show you just one world. And if we can get the lights down, if that's at all possible. Um, no, OK, that means no. All right. Uh, all right, we'll just do our best then. Oh, hello there. <laughs> I'm lonely. Make me a world. Turn this on its head. Watch closely. The world doesn't want to go on to the next thing in the show. So she's ready to move on, and it's not. It was an unusual course <laughs> with some of the most brilliant creative students from all across the campus. Uh, <clears throat> it, it just was a joy to be involved with. Uh, and they took the whole stage performance aspect of this way too seriously. Um, uh, <laughs> and it became this campus phenomenon every year. People would line up for it. It was very flattering. and. Uh, it gave kids a chance of a sense of excitement of putting on a show for people who were then excited about it. And I think that that's one of the best things you can give somebody, the chance to show them what it feels like to make other people get excited and happy. I mean, that's a tremendous gift. We always tried to involve the audience, whether it was people with glow sticks or batting a beach ball around or driving. Yeah. <clears throat> this is really cool. This technology actually got used at the Spider-Man 3 premiere in LA. So the audience was controlling something on the screen. So that's kind of nice. Um, and I don't have a, a class picture from every year, but I dredged all the ones that I do have. And all I can say is that 
what a privilege and an honor it was to teach that course for something like 10 years. And <coughs> um, all good things come to an end, and I stopped teaching that course uh, about a year ago. Um, people always ask me, what was my favorite moment? I don't know if you could have a favorite moment, but boy, there's one I'll never forget. <laughs> Uh, this was a, a world with, I believe, a roller skating ninja. And one of the rules was that we performed these things live, and they all had to really work. And the moment it stopped working, we went to your backup videotape. And this was very embarrassing. So we have this ninja on stage, and he's doing this roller skating thing. And the world, it did not crash gently. <laughs> and I come out, and I believe it was Steve Audio, wasn't it? Was it? Where is he? OK, where is Steve? Ah, my man, Steve Audio. And talk about quick on your feet, right? I say, Steve, I'm sorry, but your world has crashed, and we're going to go to videotape. And he pulls out his ninja sword and says, I am dishonored. Ah! And just drops. <laughs> and so I think it's very telling that my favorite moment in 10 years of this high technology course was a brilliant ad lib. <laughs> and then when the videotape is done and the lights come up, he's lying there lifeless and his teammates <laughs> drag him off. It was really a fantastic moment. Um, and the course was all about bonding. People used to say, well, you know, what's going to make for a good world? I said, I can't tell you beforehand, but right before they present it, I can tell you if the world's good just by the body language. If they're standing close to each other, the world is good. Right. And BBW was a pioneering course. And uh, um, I, I won't bore you with all the details, but uh, it, it wasn't easy to do. Uh, and I was given this uh, when I stepped down from the ETC, and I think it's, it's emblematic. If you're going to do anything that's pioneering, you will get those arrows in the back, and you just have to put up with it. I mean, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. But at the end of the day, a whole lot of people had a whole lot of fun. Uh, when you've had something for 10 years that you hold so precious, it's the toughest thing in the world to hand it over. And the only advice I can give you is find somebody better than you to hand it to. And that's what I did. There was this uh, kid at the VR studio way back when. And you didn't have to spend very long in Jesse Shell's orbit to go, the force is strong in this one. <laughs> And one of my, great, my two greatest accomplishments, I think, for Carnegie Mellon were that I got Jessica Hodgins and Jesse Shell to come here and join our faculty. And I was thrilled when I could hand this over to Jesse. And to no one's surprise, he has really taken it up to the next notch. And uh, you know, the, the course is in more than good hands. It's in better hands. Uh, but it was just one course. And then we really took it up a notch. And we, uh, we created what I would call the Dream Fulfillment Factory. Uh, Don Marinelli and I got together, and with the university's blessing and encouragement, we made this thing out of whole cloth that was absolutely insane, should never have been tried. All the sane universities didn't go near this kind of stuff, creating a tremendous opportunistic void. Uh, so the Entertainment Technology Center was all about artists and technologists working in small teams to make things. It was a two-year professional master's degree, and Don and I were two kindred spirits. We're very different. Anybody who knows us knows that we're very different people. Uh, and we like to do things in a new way. And the truth of the matter is that we're both a little uncomfortable in academia. I used to say that I'm uncomfortable as an academic because I come from a long line of people who actually worked for a living. So, uh, <laughs> I detect nervous laughter. All right. 